Hello and welcome to Live at Epifan. It is Thursday at 3 o'clock Eastern, which means we are here yet once again uh, for another episode of Live at Epifan talking about something interesting to do with streaming. And I think today we probably have one of the most interesting things to talk about when it comes to live streaming, and that is discussing CDNs, and in particular one, Wowza. Uh, and we have a fantastic guest joining us uh, who's going to share all of the insight about Wowza. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Wowza Media Systems uh, does a lot of stuff. Uh, a couple of the things that we here at Epifan deal with Wowza a lot on are things like the Wowza Streaming Cloud, the Wowza Streaming Engine. Uh, Epifan Video and our products have been on the works with Wowza kind of list and group for a long time. Um, and many of our joint customers, um, of course, uh, we have out there. So really excited, uh, Tim, to have you here today. Uh, everyone feel free to say hi in chat and of course say hi to Tim. And we're going to dive into all kinds of kind of nerdy things about streaming, I think. So, so welcome, Tim. Thank you, George. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm genuinely excited to be on uh, today speaking about nerdy <laughs> things. And uh, I think we're going to have a great discussion. I've been looking forward to it. So yeah. Thank you. So Tim, you and I last saw each other in person, I guess, back at IBC in September, which feels like forever ago now, uh, even though it really wasn't that far away, but it feels like forever. Uh, so it's great to see you again, uh, although virtually now. Um, but I wanted to start off with kind of sharing with our viewers, what is Wowza and what do you guys do uh, over there? Thank you. Yeah, Wowza has been around since 2005. The company's been growing as a uh, software organization. We, we manufacture software that runs a streaming server. That may be the worst introduction I've ever done for Wowza in my life. <laughs> but we do streaming software, and it has a tremendous ability to take video, contribution video streams from virtually any source. Of course, your line of products, um, anything that can support RTMP, we support SRT, and I could go on about the various ways to get video into Wowza. And then, of course, we can target it, having been transcoded on our platform, um, get it into content delivery networks, social media, broadcast, uh, of course, industry applications, and then, of course, we have a uh, cloud managed service that does a lot of what I just described in a much more simpler um, web based capacity. So I, I like to refer to Wowza as a conduit. We take video from one pipe and we get it out to a whole lot of different pipes. And I think we do a pretty good job doing that. And it's, it's exciting, very diverse. We have thousands of customers all over the world and we have our hands in all kinds of different streaming applications. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an exciting, challenging uh, so you mentioned there kind of the two different sides of things. I guess the Wowsing streaming engine is usually more of an on-premise, maybe self-installed kind of server running, maybe at a large enterprise or something like that. And then the streaming cloud. I'm Most of Epifan customers I know that also are Wowza customers, a lot of them have, you know, maybe years ago might have been using the streaming engine internally, but a lot of them have shifted towards using the streaming cloud now, as, as many services have. Um, cloud is an interesting one, because, especially within the streaming area, because there's geographic things, there's all kinds of different uh, possibilities out there. So, you know, some people have, you know, I can think of other other companies that use things like Amazon nodes to to host some of this stuff in, in the cloud. What is Wowza doing to make sure that they're delivering to all those customers around the world in, in the most efficient manner? Well, you're exactly right. The, the cloud aspect of things, uh, we're, we're able to make it easier and more accessible. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're nerdy guys. We're geeky guys. We actually might enjoy setting up a server in an Amazon node or Azure or Google, but not everybody wants to do that. So the first piece is, is setting up an extremely reliable, scalable solution in the cloud that takes care of transcoding and uh, recording and just the basic needs that a broadcaster would need. But you asked, how do we do it reliably? Well, we, we partner with a CDN. We've worked extensively with Akamai, and now we're very deep with Fastly CDN. And the the unique set of capabilities that the Fastly CDN, for example, offers us, the, the data insights, um, you know, the, the APIs that can help enhance security, they are very good at caching video all over the world. And they give us all kinds of information back fast, 
pardon the pun, fastly. Maybe that's <laughs> part of the whole approach. And so part of us doing it very well and very reliably is integrating in a excellent capacity with a CDN. So you can get the video from a variety of regional locations. Uh, if you looked at when you're setting up a stream, you can see all locations all over the world in primary data centers. And if you know Amazon and you know Google, you might even recognize some of the, the cities that are referenced. But anyway, um, you know, we get it in, we're reliable, we support SRT and, and formats and protocols that, that, that take care of that first mile as best as possible. We provide the transcoding and targeting, and we use we use a CDN. So it's it's a wonderful um, I want to say trio of of technologies. Although it's you know the trio would include an Epifan <laughs> Pearl and Wow's at Cloud as a transcoder, and then of course yeah, a CDN. absolutely. So. And you mentioned a couple of things in there with with, with the kind of brings a great segue into kind of the next thing I really wanted to touch on, and that is. You know, and, and we've talked about this here at Epifan a lot recently because of an update we rolled out on the uh, Pearl hardware this past week. Um, but essentially the protocols in which we get this data, maybe from your encoder to Wowza, and then of course beyond, depending on, on what the needs are. And that is really, I wanted to discuss with you your insight on some of these more modern streaming protocols, if you will. Uh, I think everyone's pretty familiar with RTMP, but we're starting to see that kind of fall out of favor a little bit. And, and Akamai is a great example of that. They've kind of moved towards ending support for RTMP outright in a lot of cases. Um, so, of course, the ones we've added to the Pearl are HLS, Dash, and SRT. And I think SRT is probably maybe the most exciting of those of those three. Um, so I wanted to just kind of chat with you about that. Um, is sure. is Wowza using all or some of these at this point in terms of ingestion and delivery options? I guess there's both an in and an outside to these. Yeah, Wowza, it, it, that's, it's a keen observation. Uh, Wowza certainly can, and I've configured Wowza to ingest Apple HLS, literally taking the chunks from a M3U8 uh, manifest and packaging it into any outbound uh, delivery protocol that we support. That, um, And, of course, we support all of the other legacy and even cutting-edge protocols that have come out, like SRT and WebRTC more recently. Um, so, you know, Wowza, again, I mentioned earlier, it, it, it really is a do-it-all on the ingest side. I don't think RTMP is going anywhere. It, it kind of puzzles me that, you know, there would be an anti-RTMP sentiment on the contribution side. Because as I understand it, RTMP is very bad in the browser, um, with the flash plugin, but when it comes to um, a reliable way to get video around, I don't think RTMP is is by any means a uh, inferior way to transport video. Pardon me to be subjective nope. there. But what's exciting is the WebRTC and the SRT and some of the the, the opportunities there. Um, particularly WebRTC with the mm -hmm. low latency. We're looking at a a latency graph right now, and we can get into the more dense sub one second range on the right side of that slide with WebRTC. Of course, you can do it with SRT yeah. as well. Um, and, and, and in fact, I know we're using SRT today for the uh, broadcast. And, um, you know, before we got started, we're all kind of marveling at how fast data is traveling uh, geographically with me being in California and, and you being yeah. in, in Ottawa. Um, so it, it, it's remarkable that you can get the latency numbers, you can get the low, the um, air tolerance that SRT provides. Um, yeah, and of course, Wowza is supporting that, and we're innovating. We're, we're doing the best we can to to continue to stay with the evolution of SRT as it continues to to develop and the standard changes. Yeah, exactly. And of course, um, you know, we very recently joined the SRT Alliance, and of course, added SRT to the Pearl products. But you guys were members of the Alliance for quite a long time now. Um, and for those of you who don't know. SRT, um, if you haven't joined us for some of the previous stuff, SRT, Secure Reliable Transport is what it stands for. It was uh, something created by, by High Vision. Um, and they wanted to make sure it was open source and sort of supported by a huge community. And so the SRT Alliance was born. And, you know, there's a huge number of companies, uh, including Wowza and Epifan, as part of this alliance now. Uh, and it makes it really cool and really exciting to work with those other companies on testing interoperability and seeing the growth of the ecosystem in all kinds of different ways. 
Uh, so that's really, really interesting. But you guys were there a long, long time before us. So maybe tell me a little bit of the background of Wowza wanting to join the Alliance. Well, I think Wowza wants to be the solution provider that is, is somewhat come one, come all. We, we want to be on the front side of, of a new emerging technology. And clearly the open sourcing of SRT was very exciting because of the feature set involved there. Our users will have a better streaming experience, likely leveraging SRT for that first mile because you can adjust the, um, like for example, you can set 400 milliseconds so it can help battle against right. packet loss and it actually works. And it's 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 available freely in, in the platform. So certainly our, our, our motive was you know, to, to get on board with this. Now, I, I'll be really honest with you. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not um, sit, seated at the strategic <laughs> table, why they did it inside of Wowza. I do know that it was a surprise. It was very exciting. I think we announced it right around in NAB time in either 2017 or 18. And um, there was quite the reception. I, you were probably there. There were some SRT um, gatherings at NAB, I believe. Maybe IBC. I get them mixed up. Um, because it's such a it's such a haze of effort, but where it was standing room only, where were people sitting on the ground? I mean, everyone's just so interested in this in this uh, in this uh, yeah. protocol. So yeah, I, I share the coolness and and funness of it. But you know, you had that slide up earlier. There are so many companies yeah. that are participating, including yourself. And sometimes Fantastic. they're 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 all doing something slightly unique um you know there's camera manufacturers up there there's you know cdns up there there's there's hardware encoder manufacturers like us and they're you know just the fact that there's this really broad ecosystem i think is really really cool um and so if you guys are interested in more deeper stuff about srt in 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 particular we have done some other stuff including webinars and some other shows about that and, and feel free to go back and check that out but one of the things i think that's the most interesting thing is it's actually kind of what we're doing right now today for the show. And that is using essentially a chain of different things, using SRT to bring Tim in remotely to our production, myself remotely into our production, and then deliver that as our Facebook, YouTube, and, and Twitch streams. Um, and I think for me, what's most exciting about this is that um, and, and Tim, we talked the other day a little bit about this, is that one of the things as maybe a small silver lining to all of this pandemic craziness is that being forced into lockdown, stopping content creation was, was not an option. And so companies and individuals had to adapt uh, to ways of creating content, uh, even in these conditions. And some of the technology behind that that has emerged that we may have been waiting a year, two years to maybe see emerge, but we, now we've seen it emerge in a matter of months, has been really exciting. And for us, you know, SRT has been part of that because we can do this multi-site, multi-remote person aggregated into our, our maybe more normal production flow and then get it back out. And that's, being able to do that really high quality is amazing. Um, and that's that's exactly what we're doing today, essentially. Um, of course, you know, we have slightly different ways of providing that SRT feed, but I think that in itself is one of the reasons why SRT is so exciting is that I might be using an Epifan Pearl, you're using something else, but they're both providing SRT mm -hmm. and they're both going into the Pearl 2 in our studio where Cameron is remotely controlling it and sending it back out. To me, just the fact of that, that mixed ecosystem is is super, super exciting. I absolutely agree. I, it, what's even more exciting is, is thinking about how completely separate, you and I have not been collaborating, but, but many of us have come to a similar architecture using mm -hmm. SRT. I have to tell you, I am absolutely impressed with the production architecture with the Pearl. Uh, Cameron gave me a, a breakdown of it before we, we, we joined in our preparations. And I just think it's amazing, to your point, that I could be using a, an iPhone with the uh, High Vision Play app on there, pushing SRT. I could be using a, a, an Acme yeah. encoder sh shooting SRT, or I could be using one of your amazing Pearl products. And it, 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 I, I, am, I too share the excitement that a broadcaster can create a virtual production in this 
completely isolated world that we live in. And there are some folks I, I know I've I've sharpened my pencil and I've tried the hardest I can to help some of these broadcasters who have the th- this problem that you guys yeah. are solving. That we're solving collectively. How do we do this and not be showing a Brady Bunch Zoom screen that's been scanned and sent out as an RTMP? That's great. That's okay. But for full production, for something to look amazing, you really have to be running that through a a head in and mixing it and getting audio right and getting latency right and getting sync right. And you can do all that. So I, I don't mean to go too far with this topic, but I too share that how... That, that we have that universal SRT to bring us all together. And by the way, don't don't forget, if there's a problem from my my ISP, there's a likelihood that SRT will go back and get the right. packets that it lost. Exactly. And here I am just shouting along smooth yeah, as silk. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, uh, it's really interesting. Um, so one of the things, and we kind of touched on that a little bit. Again, it's a, it's a great and great segue is that, you know, in this environment, um, I think both both Wowza and Epifan have learned a whole bunch of new customers as well as other potentials for people needing to do things, either things we're used to doing already or maybe new things or modifications of existing workflows. What have you guys at Wowza been hearing in terms of what the customers have need, needed very recently, especially in this global pandemic kind of era we're in? Um, what have people been coming to you asking for? You know, are they finding everything they need, or what's 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 the next hurdle? Yeah, I think one of the great hurdles that we're finding of recent, and when I say recent, I'm referring to the period of time you're you're talking about, is interactivity, um, two-way video, breakout rooms, the ability to facilitate discussions like what we're having, but in a very secure or somewhat of an ecosystem capacity while still involving the cloud. I'm thinking of a uh, very large healthcare company that is a household name that I certainly won't mention, but they they took advantage of cloud technology, not necessarily abandoning, but recognizing that everyone's tens of thousands of employees are now remote. You can't run all of that through your VPN. And so they have to get really good at security really good at authentication and then leverage a CDN resource so that everybody can get that critical yeah. messaging from their from the leadership in their companies. So there's there, the enterprise is having to change. They're having to scale fast. Um, we're looking at it. And again, I did mention interactivity. Um, there are quite a few use cases, actually, we could go through. But but I do think interactivity and scale um, yesterday <laughs> has been a, a tremendous challenge. Yeah, for absolutely. Us. Um, you know, we ourselves, and, and I think you guys have done it as well, really ratcheted up the content creation in the form of webinars and, and other education-based things to try and help customers learn more about things. So for us, you know, that's, we've done a lot more of that. And the, the interactivity and people watching it, the, the size of the audiences we're getting for that stuff has been incredible. And just people are hungry for this information and and learning how to do it. And I I really do think that we're probably never going to go backwards from this. This is now in terms of the, you know, the, the world of streaming, the world of collaboration remotely. I think this, it, so I guess our businesses (laughs) are, this is the new normal for us in a lot of respects. And to me, that's also really exciting. Um, I mean, it's good for business, uh, not going to lie, but it's, it also means that it will continue to push uh, that forefront. You know, we've, we've had a lot of conversations with customers and and i've often labeled it as as the the final frontier if you will in terms of being able to do this with things like music right where it's easy to have conversations right because you don't necessarily need the highest quality of of audio for a conversation but if you want to do this with multiple points a full band for example uh remotely you know that's maybe the final hurdle that no one quite has figured out how to nail that, but we're getting close and that's really exciting and really interesting Mm -hmm. to, to see. Um, so, but in all of that, there's of course challenges. Um, what are some of the challenges that the Wowza has been facing and hopefully overcoming? Well, the, you know, the, the challenges are, are, they're, they're not insignificant. I, I think helping people with their first mile, um, with which SRT is, is, is a huge component in. 
um, helping people understand the um, you know the ability to manage their their stream using a CDN and you know I, I I'll, I'll step ahead a little bit I'm thinking about the mm-hmm. house of worship user who um, maybe we're doing some streaming maybe streaming to just a social media network and then they realize that their entire congregation is is completely isolated and they need to still serve and, and maintain that community and so the challenge is um, you know a user who may not be a video streaming engineer that's trained formally trained or someone who's high tech getting them to get a hold of a product not unlike yours um, get familiar with a content delivery network get familiar with properly sending a stream into Facebook YouTube others um, the you know a big challenge has been just educating folks on how right. to stream uh, I, you know we had an old blog uh, several years old on how to stream to Facebook live from your church and it was so weird how that particular blog was getting massive attention. And I was getting overwhelmed with questions from, you know, your church media guy. How do I stream to Facebook? And, and it went on for days. And, you know, we were speaking earlier offline how during this initial COVID crisis, you know, we were working dutifully yeah. very hard. And I found myself tallying quite a few who just needed that basic, what is bit rate? <laughs> what is yeah. keyframe interval? What is, you know, frame rate? And, and. You know, I, and the, I'll, I'll I'll refrain from going too far down that line, but it's been a, a work of education, helping people scale quickly and yeah. transition, um, enterprise and broadcasters transitioning. It's been quite the absolutely, effort. and and I completely agree with you. It, it, I feel like you're just telling my story right there because it's it's basically been the same thing, right? Except you know, from our perspective, it's it's talking about you know what can our products offer. You know those, those people, whether it is is churches, which is certainly the house of worship, worships, the churches has been one of the largest areas that have had to, um, you know, change because they've been they technologically they're typically well behind say enterprises and businesses, um, so the amount of investment and catch up they've had to do in this has been much more significant. Um, but it's been really exciting to see that because, like you say. You know, maintaining some of these communities, whether it's an internal community to a business or whether it's a, a larger community within a faith based organization or, or anything uh, has been the biggest struggle of all of this pandemic stuff. And, and but it's also the most valuable part of humanity, if you will, to let we don't need to go down that, you know, that that sure. road too deeply. But but it is important. And, you know, it's it's. Being able to provide the technology to deliver that, I think, has been something I'm particularly proud of. And and being able to work with with partners and other companies that are on the same path and being able to do the same thing. And ultimately, you know, if you can end those yeah. sometimes overworking 12, 13 hour days with, a, but you know what, I did something good with all of that. <laughs> um, you know, it's that's a good day. Um, so. George. I can't agree with you more. Um, how many folks have you spoken to, whether they're new customers or existing, who, who are desperately saying, I'm just trying to keep my business right. alive. So when you're helping a yoga studio build an online platform in right. two days, you feel like you're actually keeping people yeah. paid, keeping keeping the wheels of capitalism lubed and rolling. You know, we've been hit with telemedicine. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been hit with, you know, of course, events, uh, law enforcement. I mean, it just the, the cool, one of the great things about being in this in this industry and particularly a product like ours that touches so many different use cases. And it's almost addictive. It's so exciting to see everything from drones to live events, you know, all these different places where we're involved. But I, I share that taking that excitement and that fulfillment, getting beyond the technology, getting beyond something that works, but actually seeing it generate revenue he keep people yeah. going it's it's truly amazing yeah it has been and and so on that note where where do you think where do we go from here what is what does the future hold in terms of the live streaming industry as a whole and 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 hopefully both epifan and wowza are going to continue to be on the forefront of that but where do you just theoretically where do we go from here you know, this is just popping into my mind, but it's somewhat a coming of age of video w- in the workplace and in, in, you know, in the marketplace. Uh, it's it's not a new thing, video streaming, but uh, I'm thinking about the validation. You know how decision makers, how organizations are realizing um, telecommuting telecommuting is tremendously mm-hmm. valuable. 
people working from home is actually quite productive. And oh my goodness, I can maintain a connection with my company as a leader through this medium. I think we're going to see not only a uh, not only a continuing of what's been established, but an evolution towards expanding and getting better at that. For example, the the workflow we're doing today, um, where you're switching this entire broadcast using your Perl encoder. Um, that's gold to enterprise customers. And so I think that, you know, people recognizing that this is somewhat here to stay, you could say the new normal, you could call it the new innovation. Um, I think it's going to grow. I think it's going to, to up level. Uh, it's not going to be just a software based encoder and, you know, a 720p camera that some guy had in his, in the trunk of his car and he's doing a little, little fun, little web, web broadcast to his company and we're talking about something that will have real clarity high definition low latency um you know vod capability post event um, content management uh there's all yeah. sorts of opportunities that i think are going to just continue yeah to i absolutely agree and and i think that again it's one of the most exciting things we've seen in in these times is you know whether it's um, you know, we've we've used this tagline. A colleague of mine mentioned it. I don't even know who wrote it down, but uh, we used it in a video we had done a couple of years ago about the the history of the Pearl products as a marketing piece. And and in that, one of my colleagues uses the term the democratization of video as one of the goals of of mm -hmm. Epifan, in the sense of making it accessible to everyone for everything and information being being power to, to into the hands of, of people. And I think that's one of the things we've, we've seen in the past three months and, and where I think the future is really gonna to move towards, whether it's more live streaming and interactivity of maybe just small town councils to full on, you know, in our case here in Canada, parliament or, um, you know, those kinds of things, just making that more accessible and more frequent. We don't have to rely on these huge traditional media organizations to deliver that anymore. Um, it's something that can be delivered in a big way. We, we had a customer in Australia that was using the pearls to live stream their daily COVID-19 updates just within their hospital network, not even publicly, just oh, wow. so that each location within the country and within that area, you know, knew what was going on from their, from their top doctors. Um, and of course, we've seen that at a political level as well. So, I mean, there's there's some really cool stuff happening there. And, and you know, for for us here, you know, in Canada, Parliament has been essentially operating mostly remotely, you know, and there's a small part of me that's going, well, why not just do that forever? Why do we have to have people sitting in the same room all the time? I mean, if we're representing people from a widespread demographic, we can welcome more of those people in through technology and, and hopefully see these conversations grow and, and hopefully make it a better situation for everyone. Um, so I think that's really interesting. And, and hopefully as the interactivity improves Definitely. through these technologies, it's, it'll get more and more exciting. Well, George, we're getting better at it from a technology standpoint. This is somewhat of a human factor, but we're getting better at communicating via this medium. Um, I can tell you that in the time I've been in this time, I've been more on video than I ever have been, and I'm feeling more comfortable, and we're learning how to communicate better. And so I can't see any reason why this wouldn't yeah, continue. Absolutely. It's exciting. So I was going to yeah. look at chat here for a second just to see if anyone had any questions uh, for us. Um, so I was just seeing some people commenting, like Linda commenting, you know, I think it, I think it's uh, companies like Epifan and Wowza that are uniquely placed to push for further spread of decent internet access for remote areas. And, and, and I kind of agree with that as well, as you know, the demands for this type of technology increases, the need for the type of technology increases. The only way that's accessible is with obviously improved connectivity and rural areas in both the US and in Canada are one of the areas that are underserved in that regard. And, and hopefully these demands will increase um, infrastructure for, for those people. Yeah. I'll give a quick plug for cloud-based transcoding. You can send a 4K or 1080p full HD from a Perl, get it into a Wowza cloud, and a rural user who has a very, very poor performing uh, 
mm-hmm. internet connection, we'll be able to watch it in standard right. definition. And so you don't have to compromise or augment your, your contribution. You can just use the transcoding component in cloud. So, uh, you know, there, there definitely is going to be a push for fiber in rural locations. I feel sorry for people in rural locations sometimes. It's like, well, can we get these people some bandwidth? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, my, exactly. <laughs> my own parents are those people. Uh, so, uh, exactly. Um, although it hasn't been asked as a question, I know it comes up all the time. Um, so I wanted to kind of spend a little bit of time going back and explaining what we're doing to produce this show today because it, everyone's always curious about that. And it was something that, you know, before this, when, when we were talking with you, Tim, we were talking about how were we going to do this? And we obviously wanted to make sure we were presenting the absolute best quality experience we could for the viewers. So essentially what we're doing is, you know, two different hardware encoders feeding SRT into the Pearl 2 that's sitting in the Epifan studio where Cameron is doing all of the production work. And then we're streaming that back out uh, with RTMP to YouTube, Facebook, uh, and we do Twitch as well. But in the background, to make sure that Tim and I have a very natural conversation, we actually have a back channel communication. We happen to be using Zoom for that, but we could have been literally using a phone call if we wanted to. It could have been anything. We just need the voice comms to make sure that it's it's natural, just in case the latencies from those two ends are not quite ideal. Um, but because of that, it means what our viewers see is largely invisible, but we're having a very natural conversation, which is which is awesome. What I like about it is we're in total control of the bit rate and the frame and all of the um, streaming aspects. So we're not beholden to whatever the service exactly. can provide. Um, you've, you've been able to tailor this workflow end to end. Um, and I, I think that's the kind of the holy grail as far as this um, you know remote broadcasting is concerned. We do have some questions coming into chat and some of these are pretty good ones. So uh, I hope you're ready for that, Tim. Um, <laughs> I better sharpen my yeah, pencil. So the first one is, is, uh, is kind of a higher level one. Uh, Danny Grizzle, who's a very uh, frequent viewer of ours, was just asking, what indicates the need for a CDN? Um, I think I can answer that from my perspective, and then I'll I'll let you address it as well from yours, um, because we're kind of on maybe opposite ends of that link. (laughs) Um, From my perspective, if you're someone who is trying to do live streaming and reach a broad audience, and you're basically already in the need for a CDN to a, a, to a large degree in the sense that if your audience isn't in a single place, let's take YouTube, for example, if you want to be beyond just YouTube, chances are you're going to need a CDN in the middle to distribute it to other platforms at the same time. Um, the other need for that, and you could argue that YouTube in itself is a CDN. Um, the other need for it, of course, is that and I get this question all the time from people asking, well, if I have a Pearl, why can't people just directly connect to the Pearl? And the reality is, is that the internet connection you have in your location simply cannot sustain it. You you can't host that number of, of connections. And that's where things like the cloud come into it. Distributed networking means the, you don't have to carry the load, which when you're talking about the volumes, um, you know, it used to be, people used to run websites from their basement, right? Because they'd have one or two hits a day, so it was no big deal. That's not the reality of the internet anymore. Um, and, and so when you're just talking about the sheer volume of data, it's unrealistic to self-host. And that's where you, you identify the need for a CDN from my perspective. Yeah, I think you've covered it pretty well from a technical standpoint. Um, you know, the CDN is the ability to globally distribute content and you don't have to build that infrastructure. You basically subscribe to it and leverage their network. Um, another thing that comes into play is is how do you want to run your business? Uh, you, you know, I would argue that YouTube and Facebook and Twitch are in fact CDNs, but they're sponsored by these very large social media networks. Well, maybe you want to be a YouTube. Right. Maybe you don't want to be beholden to some of the um, constraints from a free product, which obviously they can charge advertising as they should um, to support their their platform. So using a CDN, you are in in total control of monetization. So not only do you have all the technical advantages, 
um, you, you're, you're typically paying for what you use. You're using something that's optimized and, and you know, hardened and proven. But you're also in control of your monetization. Right. So, you know, you can build your business accordingly. Yeah, and I think that plays into the another question that, uh, that Chris C. was asking here. Um, now, this is maybe more of a technical one that, uh, so if, if you're not, uh, if you don't have the answer offhand, Tim, that's fine. But his question was, how much web development skills are required to create, say, a branded landing page uh, in Wowza Streaming Cloud uh, for his stream? Uh, and are there tools like password protection, authentication, and so on? Um, now, I know you guys have some tools there, but oftentimes it could be mm -hmm. as, you know, just embedding a player somewhere else, too. Sure. Well, Wowza Streaming Cloud provides a very simple player that you could place your logo in and you could distribute or link to a uh, cloud.wowza.com URL and watch your video. That's probably less than what most people would need, but it is something that's immediately turnkey. But as far as a skill set, take a blank HTML page, put your image in it, put the code, the embed code that comes from our product happens to have an embed code in Wowza Cloud, and you could you could do it as an iframe if you want, or you could just put the code in an HTML page and then host it on like Amazon S3, where you don't have to mess around with the uh, uh, SSL certificates. And boom, you're in business. You're running. I don't think it takes a lot of web development skills. We have all the tutorials and code examples. It's it's a lot of copy and paste, and then make sure the URL is right kind of stuff. Um, so I would say, I, and I don't like to use this term, George, very often with regard to streaming, but it's pretty easy to do. <laughs> Now, when you want to get into content management, paywalls, authentication, that's a whole other uh, kit and caboodle. But at the, you know, if you want to dive into the shallow end of the pool, it's yeah, not that Chris hard. has he had a follow up here saying, you know, for me, the AV side, uh, you know, a source hitting the CDN is not a problem. You know, the web page to embed the stream into is where he stumbles, and he's, he's not a coder yet. Um, but like you said, with yeah. With an embed code, you know you don't you don't need a whole lot else. Um, you know that that does make it pretty simple and straightforward. Oh yeah, let's say you've got a company that already has a website. You you make another page and call it live.html, and it's probably got a header on it and footer. You put the you, you fiddle around with it and you get the player to render properly and right. and you're done in some cases. So I would encourage people to experiment with it and not be intimidated by it. We're trying our best, you guys, to get this thing as approachable as possible. So uh, I, that's an awesome question. I'm glad I'm glad. Yeah, that came and out. I think there's so many there's so many tools out there now to make building websites easy. I mean, they're advertised on practically every YouTube video you see. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah. whoever it is, they're going to have facilities for you to take those embed codes and, and plug them in, basically. It's it's easier now than it's ever been in history to, to, to make your own content, Definitely. whether it's websites or whether it's live streaming. Um, so I think we're going to wrap up here pretty quickly, Tim. I want to thank you once again for joining us. This has been an awesome conversation. I really appreciate your time today. Um, any any final comments uh, from you, and, and where can we find you? We're at wowza.com. I'm Tim at wowza.com. So you're welcome. If you have any questions, uh, comments, cries of outrage that you'd like to share with me, I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. It has been fantastic being on with you, George. Uh, Epifan, I... I think you have a, a fantastic product. I'm definitely a champion of, of you and your company. So it's been wonderful to be here. Um, look forward to maybe doing this Absolutely. again Absolutely, and, and hopefully in the not-too-distant future, we'll be able to sit down over a beer or something at a show. And, and <laughs> those there are one things you can't do virtually quite as well, you know. But uh, we'll get there. No. We'll get there. <laughs> I know you've got a fridge down to your left. I, 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 just kidding. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tim. Really appreciate your time once again. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, once again, it's Thursday, of course, so live at Epifan. We'll be back next week. Um, and we're going to be talking probably more about this cool streaming stuff because next week, I believe, we have some special guests from another company joining us, Bird Dog. And they make a ton of cool stuff uh, from cameras to all kinds of things. And uh, that's going to get exciting on that front as well. So join us next week. We're going to be chatting with them. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, follow, do all those socially things and click all the stuff. And uh, we'll be back here next week. Be sure to check out our webinars as well, epifan.com slash webinars to see the list of upcoming ones as well as all the ones we've been doing for the past three months. And that's a pretty deep catalog now. But there's a ton of information out there. 
including more technical things on thing on stuff we've talked about today, like SRT, uh, or how we do these shows uh, in all of this. So check that out, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much.